Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am OM. The real reason I want to speak on Romans chapter 3 verse 23 today is because it has been so taken out of context. Like I grew up hearing this scripture as if it was like the best line of the Christian faith. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And to me, it was giving a wrong information because it was as if it is a scripture that strips you of your power to even do right or of the passion to even want to do right to follow God or to work with God or to become righteous because already it's telling you all of sin. And then the way I've heard it preached is instead of it emphasizing salvation through Christ without our works, it was emphasizing us getting to work to deserve salvation, which was the opposite of what Paul meant in Romans chapter 3. This very verse is a continuation of Paul's speech as he was talking in his writing. Why did Paul say for all have sinned? and fall short of the glory of God. No one is righteous. There is no saint on earth. True, but then all will go to heaven because we know that heaven is made for the saint. When we come to talk about the second coming of Christ or heaven, they are now like, oh, by God's grace, probably we'll go to heaven. No, you have to have that assurance that through the works of Christ, you are already saved. Not like, oh, God, help us to make it to heaven. If you don't know about the grace of God, that is why you are not in that place of assurance to know when it comes to eternal life, Jesus has already given eternal life. Have you received yours? If you have not received yours, that's why you'll be in that place of like, oh God, I hope that I will not miss heaven. Why would you miss if you have already received eternal life? You see in the letters of Paul, it talks about the heavenly work as an assurance. It says that we are citizens of heaven already. So it's not like we are trying to walk to, you know, deserve being given a space to be in heaven. Jesus said, I'm already going to make a place for you because where I am, there you'll be also. So now let's get into the context of this. This scripture was not to shame anybody or to condemn or to make someone have a permanent habit of sin to say, oh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So there is no righteous person. So don't look at me as if you are perfect. I'm not righteous. So that's why I'm committing sin. But that wasn't the goal. The goal was to make you know that everybody is a sinner. And how did we become sin? When it talks about all have sinned, it says all have sinned because all are sinners. Now, all are sinners because of the sin of Adam. All are sinners because they were subjected by nature, not by choice, to be under sin. Because the first man sinned, so every man that came after that came in the nature and in the likeness of Adam, the man, the sin nature. So now, scripture says in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, When Adam sinned, sin entered the world, Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Now, when Paul comes to talk about all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, he's skipping it at the level that whatever kind of sin you committed, and even if you say, I've not really committed sin, I've lived a moral life all my life, he says you are still a sinner, which means you still have the capacity to sin. You are still a sinner. It doesn't matter if you have committed a sin like being a prostitute or killing someone or doing some kind of bad things. I'm not saying that these things are things that should be glorified, but then it says... That sinner that robbed, that killed, and the prostitute, and you that was in church and do not know Christ, you are still the same sinner and everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs Christ. Everybody needs salvation. So there is no like, this person cannot be saved. That person cannot be saved. They killed someone. They can't be saved. Oh, she was a prostitute or he was a, prost a male prostitute. He can't be saved. Or he did this. She did that. They cannot be saved. Everyone. Salvation is for all that believes. So now it says here, it's to make everyone know that even though you think your sins are not big or many, you are still a sinner without Christ. Now you can talk about Acts chapter 10, the man Cornelius. He was a devout man. This man used to pray every day. He prayed to God. He gave arms. He did good things, but then he was not saved. Why? Why did his good works not save him? Because you are doing good does not mean that you are saved. That you go to heaven because of doing good. But if you are saved and you do good, because that's why scripture says trust in the Lord and do good. Because it's not just about doing good. The angel of the Lord had to appear unto Cornelius and say, look for Peter in Joppa. Read Acts chapter 10 and you see the context of that scripture. And when Cornelius found Peter, Peter preached to him 
and he was saved. He received the message of the gospel and then received the Holy Spirit. Then that is the seal for him to go to heaven. So if you said, I've obeyed all the law, you are still a sinner. Or you want to say you've not cursed people out before in your life, you're still a sinner. <laughs> you've not slept with anyone, you've not committed adultery or fornication. That doesn't change your status. It is a status. It is a position. So now that position is changed when you come to salvation that you are no more a sinner, but you are saved. For God gave his son to save everyone that believes. And his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Remove them from their sins, from the position of sinnerhood to a position of the saint. From sinner to saint, salvation does that. And then you, you now walk the walk. It doesn't mean that when you become saved, that is an automatic journey that you become perfect. Becoming saved means as you are saved now, you are on the righteous foundation through the finished work of Christ. You keep depending on Christ. You do not go back to your works. You do not go back to trying to do anything to deserve being saved or being kept saved but you keep depending on christ who saved you to keep you the same grace that saved you is the same grace that keeps you walking with god i hope this is making sense now to get the context again romans 3 from verse 19 says obviously the law applies to those to whom it was given for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before god what is clearly saying is that the law was given so that everybody will not have excuse to say, no, me, I've been doing good. I'm not guilty. No, it says everybody is guilty before God, all the world. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. That is why none of us can keep the law perfectly. If you say you want to be made righteous by the law, the Bible says none of you, you can't be saved by that. That doesn't bring you salvation. None of us could keep the law. That is why Christ came. If God had meant that through the law we would be saved, there would be no need for Christ to come. Christ would not come. So because he came, it means nobody could and nobody would. Peter even said to the brethren, why do you want to put a yoke on the believers that are coming to Christ to tell them to obey the law of Moses, which neither us now nor our fathers our forefathers were able to keep. So it means none of them were able to keep the law, the Jewish people. Talk less of us. We can't keep the law and be saved by it. It goes to verse 21. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference between the Jew, the Greek, the Gentile. Everybody can receive the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus, believing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Because he that knew no sin became sin that you and I, who were sinners, would become the righteousness of God in Christ. That is how we come to a righteous place. He went further to say, for all have sinned. Now you see where verse 23 falls in. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 24 now continued to finish it up, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Now, let me pause here. He said that we are now justified by faith. We are made righteous by faith in Christ Jesus, whom God has said that when he died, all the sins that God did not punish, God would punish it on the body of Christ. All the sins that God in his mercy had mercy on the people, all the sins that the people in the old commandments said, God have mercy, temper justice with mercy, all those mercy, the sins that mercy covered, Christ received the punishment for it because he was said to be the one to whom he will have to die to save everybody from the old covenant to the new covenant so that now us that are coming, we can receive his grace and be righteous through Christ the savior to demonstrate at the present time is righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in jesus so god covered the sins of the past with his mercy to be punished on the body of christ and all that come to christ he is just in justifying us because he has been fair to everybody yeah so this is to tell you when you talk about for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god go forth to verse 24 that says all are being justified by faith in Christ Jesus. 
So it does not mean that it ended there and a preacher will start saying all of a sudden and fall short of the glory of God. You continue in your sin. You keep doing this. You keep doing that and then making people feel ashamed and condemned. That wasn't the purpose. The purpose was all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and then all needs Jesus. All needs salvation. Everybody needs to come to a place of saying, I am a sinner. Whether your sins were many or were not many. Your sins were like Zacchaeus or Mary Magdalene who was a prostitute or Peter who didn't really sin a lot. Whatever kind of sin you said you had, it says everybody needs Jesus. Everybody. Not just one, not just two. All of us. So even if you are in the church and you've not really had an encounter with the grace of God, you need Jesus. Yeah, you are trying on your own to obey the law to be saved. You need Jesus. That was why Paul Apostle was not like that stark sinner who was committing sin up and down, but he was a religious person who obeyed the Jewish law and kept the law. He said, when it came to the righteousness according to the law, I was perfect. I had A in that righteousness, but then that is not the righteousness that saves. So he could not be saved through that righteousness. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope that this video will bring clarity to you concerning this scripture and then your work with God would be enhanced by reason of this short video. Thank you. I am Uwem. Don't forget to hit the like button and to share this video to your friends and family and do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to. Good things are coming. More engaging contents are coming. Drop your thoughts down in the comment section and I am going to read through everyone and answer everyone. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.